Yo, Elliot, I'm married with three kids. I work and my wife stays at home with the kids, ages five, two, and 11 months. I know it's important to do my own thing. However, I find it difficult. It is important to spend time alone doing our own hobbies and activities. I tend to pass down invitations to hang, hang out with other people on my free time because I feel guilty not helping my wife with the kids when I'm able to, as well as being away from the kids. I know it's important to prioritize time away from my kids so my wife and I can get time to spend together. I see it happen frequently where people get married, have kids, and all their focus is on the atten and attention is on the ch children. Then once the kids are gone and out of the house, the marriage collapses because they forget about each other. I do not want to repeat, repeat this mistake that others have made. Let me know what you think and how to deal with this, these thoughts of guilt. Man, you are you are right. You are on the right page, and I and I understand the struggle, right? Because there's this there's this tension between who you need to be for you, who you need to be for your wife, and who you need to be for your children. You're wearing a lot of hats. That's what it is to be a man. We're pulled in many directions, especially when you're a generative man like you are with three children, three small children. So there are a few things that I, that stand out to me that I want to sort of capitalize upon in this this conversation. Number one. I'm going to go right to the end of your email where you talk about how couples focus all their attention on the children, right? The husband and the wife focus all their attention on the children. But then when the children go, because that's what they do, right? There's this beautiful imagery in Khalil Gibran's uh, book, The Prophet, where he says that the parents are like a bow, right? Like a bow and arrow. And the parents are joined together and the, and the strength of the family is associated with the with how that bow, how strong that bow is, right? And the, and the children are like the arrows. And so the parents, they gotta be strong, but they gotta be, they gotta bend, but all for what? So they can let go, right? And that's what we do. It's like, we gotta be strong like that bow, but we gotta be flexible too. And it's all for what? So I can let go and those children can be out in the world. Cause that's where they're gonna go. That's what we're gonna do. They're not gonna be there for you forever, it's even harder for women to understand that. They think their baby's gonna be their baby forever, and that's not true. Your boy's gonna grow up, and you're not, he's not gonna be your baby anymore. So you gotta keep that in mind. That the, your kids are only yours for a little while. You're borrowing them, in other words, or, or, or you've been entrusted with their, with their rearing, but we don't, at a certain point, own them. They're gonna own themselves, right? Once age 18 comes, you can't say nothing, right? They're gonna do what they wanna do. So all the focus absolutely 100% cannot be on the children. It cannot. And another reason why that focus can't be on the children is because of what I was saying about before. The strength of the bond between the parents is the most important thing for the children. Children could be raised in a poor family. But if the mother loves and respect, if the mother respects the father and the father loves the mother, right, then it's going to be all right. The number one thing children need more than anything I don't care what the world tells you. The most important thing for children is two parents that are one flesh. Mom respects dad, speaks highly of him when he's not here and he's working. My wife shows all kinds of affection for me right in front of my children. Right? And so people think that's weird and stuff. But my, my wife, she, and I do. I simp over my wife in front of my children. Right? So my children, there's no question in my home, no matter what my children think of me or what happens or where they choose to go, or what decisions they make, one thing they'll always be able to say is, my parents loved each other and I saw it. It was tangible. There's a tangible love between my parents. Mo I don't think most children can say that. I don't think most children can say that I saw my parents love each other. I saw my mother respect my father and I saw my father sacrifice for my mother. You, that more than choosing the right way to teach them or things to do with them or to be engaged. I think that fathers don't necessarily need to be super engaged in the children's life until a certain age, right? Especially for young men, that age is around like 12, right? And for girls too. I think the mother is the primary caretaker for the first 12 years. Father just needs to be there so they know they have a father and so that they know father is supporting mother and mother respects father. 
That's really all they really need from us, right? You don't need to be there changing the diaper and, and, and oogling over the children all day long. In fact, it might make them sick, right? Why is this guy here all the time, right? They want to be with their mother. At least it is with my kids. They'd much rather be around their mother than be around me, right? But they know that all the love trickles from down, down from above. The only reason why your mother could love you the way you, she does is because of father, right? Father's a little bit more far removed. Far removed. And I, you know, I accept that. And I'm, I'm hoping you can accept that also. You don't need to be there for the, for the kiddling and cuddling the kids all the time, right? They need that from their mother. What they really need from their father is love and support to the mother. They got to see the bond between the parents as a strong bond. And they can only see a strong bond between the parents if the parents make a legitimate effort to have a strong bond. That means you and your wife, you got to be still dating each other, right? I know it sounds corny, but me and my wife, we love we love going out to be with each other. Last night, it was funny. Last night, we had to take two of my daughters to soccer practice. They had soccer practice. And normally, Colleen would just take them and go, or I would take them and go and come back. But yesterday, Colleen spent all day on the road because she was busy doing stuff. She was out you know, shopping and stuff. She was doing things. And she came home and, and she had to run out right away with the kids to take them to soccer practice. And she looks at me and she's like almost pleading. She's like, I don't want to leave you. Will you come with me? And, you know, the kid, and my kids, they laugh at her because, you know, we're, we're, we're cheesy with each other. And she's just being honest. She's like, I don't want to leave you again. I want to be around you. Uh, will you come with me? So she un it was unnecessary totally. But I said, okay, fine. I'll go with her. She and I. We drove together, and when we drive together, we hold hands. I'm telling you how corny she and I are, but we love each other. I put my hand, I usually put my hand in the, in the console, and she puts her hand on mine. We're holding our hands, we drive, we'll get to this kid's soccer practice. The kids get out, and guess what she and I do? We went somewhere, and we had a little snack together. Just spend a little bit of time on a Wednesday. Just a little extra time with one another on a Wednesday for no reason. But other than that we, have, we need to maintain a strong bond between she and I. And we need our children to see it. So you have to make an effort. Remember a couple weeks ago, I was talking about a, a couple that I went and listened to their talk at this Bible thing that I went to. And the lady and the man, they were, good, they were a good couple. I appreciated their words. They said, you should have daily couch time. Daily couch time, she called it. She says, no matter what, every day for 10 minutes, we got to sit down and look at each other and talk. Right? You got to keep that bond with your wife strong, bro. Strong. And I can't, you know, you can't tell your wife what to do in a way. Like, you can suggest things. But I tell you something that my wife does that I know is very important for my family. And that, and both, it goes both ways for us, but it's more so she doing it than me. It goes both ways, though. Uh, she speaks highly of me towards the children, and she does not tolerate any disrespect towards me from the children. Right? We were having a problem a couple weeks ago, and she explained to one of my daughters, she said, I will not be buying you groceries anymore. I will not be buying you nice things. You will not continue to get stuff from us until you start to shut your mouth and listen when your dad's talking, because she likes to talk back. And I, that just makes, that's one thing that makes me more mad than anything. Then I started ranting to my wife, and I'm like, I'm not going to tolerate this shit with this kid. She can go. Right? Honestly, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to put up with it. And so Colleen, she took that seriously, because she knows. So she goes and tells her children, do not disrespect your father. But the same thing, it goes both ways. The, mi the minute they try to raise their voice with their mother, I step right in. I'm like, whoa, you are not going to talk to my wife, your mother that way at all. We got each other back. Me and my wife got each other back more than we got the kids back. She look after me, I look after her. And sometimes it's like we're a team against them. right? And we know that, we recognize that. And that's all a byproduct of putting each other first. We are first. Our relationship is first, then the kids. If we ain't all right, then the kids ain't gonna be right. And kids, they don't know, but they try to manipulate and turn the, turn the parents against each other. And if you have children that, and you don't have this kind of order in your home, the children will turn the parents against each other, and then parents, bad parents, will turn the children against the other parent. That's why I said it's so important for my wife to be talking highly of me when I'm not around. How many mothers speak poorly about the father while he's not around? I've listened to so many young men tell me, yeah, my mom only talks shit about my dad. He's this, he's that, he's bad, don't be like him. 
even if even if you all are divorced, never talk down to a child about their father or their mother. That's that child's, especially a son. That's his father. You can't talk like that. Even if the man is not a perfect man, you cannot denigrate him in front of the child. You can't let the child figure that out on his own. And most of it is unfounded because people are just immature, immature. So they whine and complain about their spouse to the children. There's nothing worse that you can do to destroy a child's life than to talk negatively about your spouse who you chose, who's your responsibility to have your relationship work out. And now you're bringing the kids in. Why are you telling the kids what your father did out there? That's none of their business. Why are you telling the kids that your mother is, is, is X, Y, and Z? That's none of their business. Y'all get your shit together. Leave the kids out of it in that regard. So you say that it's, it's important to spend time with your own hobbies and activities. It is. It's important to have your own hobbies and activities as they relate to making your family great. Right? Remember I talked earlier before about like only learning skills that are going to be helpful to you in a collapse situation? The kind of habits I get involved with is not like playing cards and playing chess, right? Like or kickball. Like I'm, unless I'm trying, unless I'm fat and I'm trying to get in a, trying to get in shape. That's a different story. But any of the activities I get involved with, any of the, any of the hobbies that I have, they all relate. Just I'm just telling you, they all relate somehow to being a better provider, protector, and leader in my family. Right? If I'm learning how to shoot guns, if I'm learning how to plant trees, if I'm learning how to raise livestock. If I'm learning how to build solar, if I'm learning how to exercise and train my body, if I'm learning how to use a particular type of supplement or herbs or, or exercise or health, these are the things that I'm interested in. These are things that, I'm, that, that, that are my hobbies, right? I don't have any hobbies that are useless hobbies. I don't have time for fucking games, right? My hobby isn't watching people play football on TV or play video games. That's not my hobby. My hobbies are always something related to furthering my greatest cause, which is making this family great. And I think you will find I think you will find space to do that too. And look, I'm not the type of guy, I'm not, and I'm not in a situation where I need to justify to my wife why I'm doing what I'm doing. But if you're in one of those situations where you know, your wife is like, "Well, why are you going? What are you doing?" You, it's better to have something that you can point to and say, "Look, I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this because." If I get better at this skill, if I learn this particular thing, if I hang out with these guys and learn what they learn, like I want to hang out with my with my backwoods neighbors over here. Why? Because they know how to hunt. They know how to catch gators, right? So if I'm over there, my wife knows, oh, Elliot's back there learning how to catch gators. <laughs> He's, and I told her that too. It's like, I want to hang out with my neighbors. I want to go hang out with those guys. Why? Not for entertainment, because they're the right kind of guys to get around to learn the things that I need to know in order to be a better provider and protector. So anything that you do should be coming from that sentiment, dude. And otherwise, I think you're on the right path. I think you're doing good. You got you married. You got three kids. God bless you, man, for having one wife and having three kids with her, right? Because we live in a time of fake families where everything's all backwards, screwed up, and patched together. You're doing it the right way. Stick with it. Make sure that you maintain attraction with your wife. There's a really good book called The uh, Massive Attraction Plan, I think, or The, man, the Man's Attraction Plan, right? Uh, either way, the bottom line is stay attractive to your wife in your in your marriage. And the way you stay attractive to your wife in your marriage is by maintaining your frame and staying on your game, not by doing what she wants you to do. Right. She, you say you feel guilty not helping the kids. It doesn't make you it's not going to turn your wife on and make her more attracted to you by helping with the kids. You, if you want to help with the kids because you want to help the kids. Right. But don't let this world fool you into having you falsely believe that the way you make women or especially your wife stay attracted to you is by doing what she wants you to do. She will resent you. She will resent you. She don't know she's, she'll resent you. She'll think that she, you, she wants you to do what she wants you to do. She will truly, genuinely think that consciously, but unconsciously, she's going to think you're useless. She's like, why, is this, why am I with this man that I can just push around and tell what to do? My wife, too. My wife is a very rational woman. There's sometimes when she wants me to do something and I won't do it because I know that if I do what she wants me to do, I'm going to lose my frame. Sometimes they're small things. Sometimes they're big things. But I won't do it just merely out of the fact that it'll lose polarity in the relationship. I'm going to do that just because she wants me to do that. Or I do it when I'm ready. Right? You know what I'm saying? You still got to maintain that. It doesn't mean be a jerk. It doesn't mean that you're being a slap dick and lazy. 
It just means in order to maintain that frame and that polarity in a relationship, you got to act like you're in charge, right? You are in charge. You are the leader. You are the head of your family. A man is the head of his family, right? And that's you. And so you keep, you keep, you keep doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. You're gonna be all right, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.